Hi everyone, I'm Rich Davis from College Game Day Basketball on ESPN. It is my great pleasure tonight to introduce you to my close personal friend, Richard Digger Phelps, one of the Giants in college basketball. Digger started his playing career at Ryder College. He scored 54 career points, 27 of those points in one game in a victory against Bridgeport. But for Digger, it was never about scoring points. It was always about building the team and making the team accomplish the most that it possibly could. That love for the game led him into coaching. He started as an assistant at Penn and later became the head coach at Fordham University in New York, where he led the Rams to a top 10 in the nation finish, something unprecedented in Fordham history, and it also got the attention of the University of Notre Dame. That's where he spent the better part of his career. He led the Irish to 14 NCAA tournaments until the 1978 Final Four. While at Notre Dame, the one thing that Digger became known for perhaps more than anything else was knocking off the line. He could get his team taught to play big games better than anybody in the sport. Seven times Notre Dame defeated the number one team in the land, most notably January 19, 1974, when Digger and the Irish stopped UCLA's record 88-game winning streak with a victory over John Wooden and the Bruins. In 1993, Digger joined us at ESPN since then to become one of the top athletes in the college game. Digger always gives first rate analysis. You see his very colorful personality, his colorful ties and matching highlighters, his dancing prowess, and certainly his dedication to the game. Now that's what they wanted him to say. Now I'm going to be honest with you. To say dancing prowess is to sort of like say Christina Aguilera had a flawless national anthem performance. Prowess <laughs> is a wee bit strong, but he did dance. And he is my great friend, one of the great legends of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard. There it goes. tell you some experiences that I've been through, and at the same time, if you've got questions you want to ask me, uh, we'll go for it. But it's obvious right now, you're at what I say is the greatest part of your life when you're in a situation for the last four years before you go to college. Some of you guys are seniors, some of you are freshmen. But it's, it's interesting because we've got to look out in today's world and see what's out there and where we got to go and what we got to do. You're at a very special school, and somebody made that happen for you. And don't ever forget that. You got nobody to blame but yourself. If you don't come out of here as a young man taking the next step at the age of 18 or so to get ready for manhood, because that's a challenge you've got to face today. So let's start off by talking about the world we live in today, the world. <coughs> in this second decade of a new century, which you have to inherit. And I know, I want to see the hands of the students, or the international students are here. Raise your hands for them, please. Okay? That's pretty impressive. And what I'm saying to you is, you are family. Oh, and these are your brothers from different parts of the world. And you're going to need this network of communication and knowledge and togetherness. Because you never know where you're going to go and what you're going to do 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Now, I grew up as an undertaker's son and grew up around death and seeing families struggle for two or three days and mourning and grievance of going through a funeral to bury a loved one. And I don't care if it was a stillborn baby or a great-grandmother in her 90s. It was still love and loss of life and the love of that family. And why I'm saying that to you is because I put life into decades. Your first two decades, you got to get a credential. That's the stage you're in now to get ready for the next stage, which for, I would say, 99.9% .9 of you should be college. To get a degree that means something for you to go on to that third decade. Because in that decade, you've got to go out and find what you really want to do and go after it. 
And whatever dream you have inside yourself right now, you believe in that dream. And you make that dream become a reality by taking the steps you need to get there. Because it's all there for you. If you decide to choose that and go for it. Because from 20 to 30, once you get established and you get into that one position, and you may, may have to sacrifice to get to where you want to be, so that by the time you're 30, from 30 to 50, you've got to go make it. Because from 50 on, you've got three decades, 50 to 60, 60 to 70, and 70 to 80. So from that game plan, so to speak, how do you fit in, where do you go, and what do you do? You've got choices. But at the same time, the choices, if I can get you to believe in four other things, I don't care what you learn in the classroom. I don't care if it's in high school, prep school, college, whatever, graduate school. If you can develop creativity, if you can develop how to be a risk taker, if you develop the right street smarts, if you develop how to be a survivor, creativity, risk taker, street smarts, survivor, I'll show you a leader. And every one of you in here have this quality to become a leader. If you develop with what you get in that classroom, those four characteristics I just gave you. Creativity, risk taker, street smarts, survivor.